There you go. Hey, give it up for uh, all your performances so far. <laughs> They've been pretty awesome. But yeah, I actually uh, grew up in Dallas. And I'm, there you go. It's a town nearby. Woo! But uh, no, I remember we'd drive through downtown, a bunch of little kids in the car, and we'd get to a certain spot in downtown, and my dad would go, boom! Boom! Those were the, uh, those were JFK got shot. <laughs> but still, so, no, it would always be like a surprise to us. We'd be like, ah, oh, I kind of jumped back. But it became like a family game, where we'd have a bunch of little kids in the back going, boom! Boom! It's like, a good man died here. So our family could have an inside joke. It's a, I think it's a beautiful thing in that. There you go. But no, I feel like uh, we have, Dallas has to double up on security whenever like an important person or president comes into town. Because that can't be what we're known for. Like, JFK's a mulligan. Just, just under the rug. Don't worry about it. It's like, no, if it happens like twice, it's what we're known for. Be like Nashville, the home of country music. New York, the city that never sleeps. You can't have Dallas, where important people go to die. <laughs> it's like, we're a, we're a positive town. You can't ha we're not like LA. Like LA, where dreams end and porn careers begin. <laughs> it happens. Or the other way around. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Sasha Gray did it. It can be done. That's not an odd. It's a person that did that thing. But all right, no. <laughs> But uh, no, I feel like uh, you can get away with a lot of stuff once, but that second time, it starts defining you. Like, say you move into a new neighbor, ah, new neighborhood. A dog goes missing. You throw a barbecue. <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird coincidence. Second dog goes missing. Second barbecue. You're eating those dogs, and we are on to you. <laughs> like, you've got to cut that out. But all right. My, uh, my dad's getting a little, old. he's getting a little older, and uh, the family doesn't really know if he's getting a little senile, or if it's early onset Alzheimer's, or if he just watches way too much Fox News. Oh. It's always, we don't know, we were kind of worried, we don't know what to be worried. It's always just like, global warming's BS. We got a Muslim in the White House. Where, where are my mittens? My hands are cold. <laughs> it's, yeah. I feel like in 20 years, Fox News is just going to slowly devolve into like an endless reel of dogs barking with buzzwords popping up on screen. <laughs> like, it'd just be like a pit bull chained to a tree somewhere, just woo, 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 taxes, woo, 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 immigration, woo, 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 collards. <laughs> it's Fox News saying it. It's Fox News saying it. <laughs> but, all right, I used to actually uh, used to be a scuba instructor in Thailand, so that was kind of a cool gig. But I lived in like near the beach in like this terrible house with like five other people. It was awesome. But one of my other roommates happened to be an American. And so we were like, hey, we need to do like a little cultural exchange, do something American for the house. So we threw a toga party. <laughs> Just because nothing, nothing says America, like appropriating another culture is an excuse to binge drink. <laughs> Gold medal every year. Every year. We get that. But no, so we threw a toga party and I just like used the bed sheet on my bed. So I have this long, flowing pink toga. <laughs> and so we all go to the bars on like little 110cc scooters. I get very drunk. And then I ride home on that scooter in my flowing pink toga. <laughs> Just living life, cruising down a hill. And then my shoulder strap, it comes undone. <laughs> Do I care? No, living life right now. And then it gently touches the back tire. <laughs> Some of you know what happens next. <laughs> so then the toga is then sucked off my body. And I don't know about you, but when I wear a toga, nothing underneath. <laughs> there you go. Round of applause, there you go. My mother raised me right. But so then this, uh, the back tires become, become encased in a blanket. I lose traction. I crash the scooter. Yeah, yeah. I'm bloodied, I'm beaten, I'm a little bruised, but I pick, up my, I pick up my scooter when I hear something behind me. So I crashed in front of a bar with a patio. There's about 30 people just laughing their asses off at me. Notice I didn't say 30 people rushing to the aid of the hurt man in the street. No, no, laughing their asses off. 
So I'm sitting there trying to fight the blanket out of the back tire, and I can't do it. So this tie guy from behind the bar comes out. He kicks it up on the kickstand, starts unspooling it. And I just have to sit there in front of all these people, just... <laughs> and then he gave... Then I sat my bare ass back down on my scooter and rode off into the sunset. So that's, I think there's a moral in there somewhere. It's probably don't drink and drive, but, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But, all right, I just got back from Louisiana. Anybody from Louisiana in the house? No, maybe? All right. Well, uh, driving to Louisiana is like driving to an episode of The Walking Dead. It's like, no, there's actually a visible line where the highway just falls apart, like right when you hit the state. And there's just kind of a general vibe change. Like a state line's an imaginary line. It's the same force on both sides. But, you know, I was driving through East Texas, and I was like, hey, man, I should, I should start camping again, like get back into nature. Then I hit Louisiana, and I was like, there's something in those woods. I hope to God my car doesn't break down out here. But no, Louisiana, like a lot of important stuff happened there. It's a chapter in every history book. But that was a couple hundred years ago. Like it's time to take a long, hard look at yourself, Louisiana. Like, Louisiana's just like Madonna. It's like, yeah, you had your time. The world moved on. Like, just, just put some pants on. Just, that's, that's, all, that's all we want. That's all it is. All right, guys, Texas, Texas has its faults too. So, you know, it's, it's way too hot and Ted Cruz exists. It's okay. It's okay. But no, I was driving on a highway and I saw a billboard and all it said was, Teachers Wanted, When Can You Start? Is that how we're getting those nowadays? It's like, no, I know our education system isn't the best, but billboard teachers don't seem like a step in the right direction. It's like, that seems like a real tough interview. It's like, so uh, how'd you hear about the position? It's like, well, I was driving to a liquor store and boom, sign. I figured I'd come check it out. But no, if that's how we're getting substitutes, I don't really, really want to know how we get actual teeth, or if that's how we, ah, mess that up. Yeah! There you go. If that's how we get teachers, I don't want to know how we get substitute teachers. Yeah! Like, it's just whatever, like, kid starts growing facial hair first, he just takes over. L Lord of the Fly style. Yeah. yeah. You can sacrifice a piggy or two for the sake of a classroom. That's... It's a Lord of the Flies reference, because I, I stopped reading a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> there, woo! We all get it. All right. I feel kind of guilty that uh, such a beautiful performance was uh, right before me, and now I'm going to talk about blowjobs, but... Hey. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we, here we are. Here we are. Let's, let's cross this bridge together, folks. But no, I remember I had like a... Uh, this was like in high school... And I had like a bragging moment in the locker room and I told my buddy, it was like, hey man, girlfriend gave me four blowjobs last night. And he was like, I had sex once. I was like, oh, that sounds way better. <laughs> but and then looking back on it, four blowjobs in one evening, that's entirely too many blowjobs for one evening. <laughs> it's like, no, no, sounds great in theory. Sure, it sounds great. But that fourth one's gonna be like 30 minutes long and toothy. People get tired, people get tired. <laughs> We're all human beings, all right? But no. The last one, she's gonna look like a jaded vet with PTSD, just dead shark eyes looking back at you. Just, what's this gonna take? So I, guess, yeah. I, guess, I guess in retrospect, I should have uh, stayed with that one. But yeah, you live and you learn. Yeah. I'm having fun. There you go. I actually lost my virginity to that girl. And uh, she wanted to be special, and I wanted to kind of be right in like, that moment in time. So I got romantic quickly. But I called my oldest brother, and I was like, man, what do I do? And he was like, hotel room. I was like, nailed it. So set it up and just went to the hotel room, and uh, just at an impulse, I turned the TV on just for background noise. And boy, am I glad that I did. Because I lost my virginity to the sweet and seductive sounds of the Born identity. <laughs> you know, the, the Matt Damon movie? But no, I always have a special place in my heart for Matt Damon. It's like, I like to imagine he was in that room whispering words of encouragement to me. It's like, yeah, you like apples? How about damn apples? It's a, that's a good Will Hunting quote. That's a, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I uh, think it's funny that McDonald's advertises the fact that it serves real meat. You can't just say you don't do a bad thing and get credit for it. It's like, really, that's just one word away from, like, a confession. 
It's like McDonald's. We serve real meat. Now. <laughs> we, we honestly don't even know what it used to be. Like, that's, or like, N Nike was another company that did that too, where it's like, Nike, we don't use child labor. Anymore. <laughs> that one really got away from us. Like, those little hands just make those shoes so good. And they didn't have to change like the signage in their workplace. It was just a tone change. It's like, just do it! <laughs> Whoa. Did you pay attention when you were little? You gotta motivate those kiddos, all right? But no, only companies can get, with, get away with that. Like people can't advertise not doing something bad and get credit for it. It's like, who here is on a date tonight? Any of you guys? There we go. Oh, we got a weird, all right, it's gonna be fun afterwards. All right. I'm on board. But imagine that he picked you up, about to go on a date. You haven't met him before. And he looks over at you and lovingly says, hey, babe, I totally don't murder people. <laughs> tuck, tuck and roll. Get out of that vehicle. It's gonna be the one that does it. All right, guys, I'll leave you with a, uh, I'll leave you with a joke about Jesus. No, I grew up going to church. I grew up going to church. It, it's, it's stuck, I feel like. But uh, no, my favorite saying growing up was, uh, Jesus is my lawyer, and he's never lost a case. That's fantastic. Then you spread that message out more. Where it's like, Jesus is my car salesman, and it's always 0% APR financing. <laughs> Jesus saves, folks. Jesus saves. Amen. Or Jesus, Kevin the big old ship called Life Jesus. Jesus is my gardener. And that was the truth. Jesus is a very nice man. It's a, it's a Hispanic joke. But no, I feel like uh, Jesus is my lawyer and he's never lost a case. I think it's just like the skeezy image we have of lawyers today, but I don't see lawyer Jesus being a good thing. You know he'd have terrible commercials. It's like, I'm Jesus Christ, the Texas Redeemer. And I will forgive you of your sins in and out of the court of law or your money back. It is Yahweh or the highway. I'm Jesus Christ, the Hebrew hammer. And I will hammer out justice for you. I will fight for you too. And now. All right, thank you guys very much. There we go.